a pleasure to get to introduce this next speaker to you. Um, he's a legend here in Miami-Dade County. He's a past commercial president, past chairman of the board, and he is quite frankly one of the top commercial instructors in the United States. And if you ever wanted to learn residential, moving into commercial, you cannot do it without taking this man's series of classes. Please give a warm, warm Miami welcome to Tom Dixon. It works. Good afternoon. I'm going to talk about negotiation in an introductory program. I do a three-hour presentation, which will be on October the 11th in the Carl Gables headquarters building if you want the full three-hour presentation. But this is going to be a quick move through negotiation concepts. One of the things with negotiations is that the more trades that you have, the greater the satisfaction. An example of that would be if you're going to purchase a used car and they're asking $18,000 and you say, I'll give you $15,000 and they said, okay. What's your first thought? I overpaid or there's something wrong with it? What should have happened was, of course, you offered 12,000 and they said no, 17, and you said no, 14, and you settled at 15. So the more trades there were, the greater the satisfaction. So as a negotiator, remember that. When you're doing a contract for the sale of a piece of property, when you see a contract that's got a lot of cross outs and marks and changes, that means that there's more satisfaction to the transaction than there would be if it was just, oh, we accepted it just like it was. So keep that in mind as you're doing negotiations. Know the difference between position and interest. Position is basically, this is where I am. Interest is the reason that you're there. You see this person with the window. He's in the library. He's hot. His position is, I'm hot. What does he do? He opens the window, so he's cool. The librarian comes over and her position is to close the window. Why does she want the window closed? Because it's a draft and it's blowing through the library. What's the solution? Open a window somewhere else. So position and interest are very important to understand in negotiations. Let me give you another example. Two people want an orange. One possibility is that one person gets the orange and the other doesn't. Or another option is cut the orange in half, and then they only get a half an orange. But because you are a negotiator and you understand the concept, you talk to the two people that want the orange, and you find out that the one person wants the orange because they want to zest it. They want the outside of the orange for flavoring. The other person wants the juice. They don't care about the outside, they just want what's on the inside. So when you're negotiating a transaction, find out what it is, what is their interest. Try to talk it through, try to understand where they're coming from so that you can present a solution to the problem of how to share an orange. Set high goals. We see this all the time in transactions. I want to sell my property for this much money, which is fine. The problem is that a lot of people who overprice their properties, buyers say, oh, it's overpriced, I'd never make an offer. You, of course, have to encourage, yes, they've priced it very high, but I think that they'll accept a lower offer. Think about how, in a transaction, you can agree to something. What are the things that are the benefits of the transaction? In the, say, in the purchase of a home, what are the benefits, the location, the schools, the access, the condition? There may be special features of the home or the location. Spell those things out so that when you're doing a presentation, you can explain, yes, this is the price, but look at these benefits that go with it. Time pressure. I have to move into this home by September. That should put a smile on your face versus, well, I'll sell the house maybe someday. 
The classic example of this was when they were settling the peace negotiations with North Vietnam. And the North Vietnamese went to, to Paris for the peace talks. And the United States went to Paris for the peace talks. Of course, the North Vietnamese, when they went to Paris for the peace talks, they rented a townhouse for three years. The United States rented a townhouse or a place to stay for three months. They argued for six months over the shape of the table that they would negotiate at. Now what happened was the North Vietnamese were under no pressure, but they realized that the United States was under pressure to settle because their lease is coming up. Okay? You need to be aware and conscious of time pressure that your clients, be that buyer or seller or tenant or landlord, is under to complete a transaction. It can work for you, but it can also work against you. When you're negotiating, you want to look at an opening price, the lowest that you would go, and something in between. So that as you go into the transaction, they're asking $20,000 for the car. You'd love to get it for twelve, dollars but you'd settle for fifteen. dollars Think about when you go into the transaction, what are the limits of what you would do. Create a printed report. If you're negotiating the sale of a home, you want to list the benefits of this home, and you also may want to list or show other properties that are available and why the one you're showing is more beneficial. Practice a dry run with somebody, particularly in negotiations. What are some of the elements? How would you do the presentation? What would you emphasize in the presentation? And of course, you search for alternatives. If you have a buyer that is looking for a particular kind of property, when they're doing the negotiations, you need to say to the seller, I have a buyer that's interested in your property, but they've also looked at other properties, so how flexible are you in the sale of your property? So you can compare information. Look for their hot buttons. What's an example of a hot button in a house? Kitchens? Kitchens, yes. Master bath. Master bath? A boat dock? A swimming pool? Find out what their hot buttons are. This lady's hot button was, I have to have this purse. But that's just a visual example. But if you find out what their hot button is, then you can emphasize that in the negotiations. You can say to the prospective buyer, this property meets those requirements, those special requirements that you have, and others don't. Authority. Authority is the opportunity to show a property to somebody that can make a decision. I've been trying to show to my dentist office space, and every time I show him office space, he says, I love it, but I've got to show it to my wife. I guess you have the same thing. You show property to the wife, and she says, well, it depends on what my husband says. So the next time you have that situation, say to her, if I show you a property that you like, do you have the authority to make a decision? Oh, of course I do. I'm the decider in the house. Then you've trapped them. They've said that they have the authority. But always you can leave the authority as something that you can go back to. Somebody says when, in a transaction, they're asking a million dollars for the house. The offer is 800000 You can say, I will present to the higher authority, the owner of the house, the offer that you make. So be aware that a th the, the movement of authority can change the negotiations. What is this? You want how much? A gentleman in my office said he went to Macy's. He saw on the floor display a couch. He said to the sales lady, how much is the couch? She said $600. $600? Let me check with my manager. She goes and checks with the manager. She comes back and she says, I'll let you have it for $450. What he, what he felt was, wow, what he said was $450, she said, I'll throw in delivery. All because the flinch. How much? Try it sometime. You might be pleasantly surprised. Good guy, bad guy is a situation I would like to, but they won't approve. This is a classic example. You go to the bank to borrow money. You sit down with a loan officer. You submit all the papers. And they never say, well, I as a banker cannot approve the loan. Who does not approve the loan? 
the loan committee. I'm not even sure there is such a thing. But what it means is they've passed the buck on to somebody else. I would like to offer you as a tenant this space with new carpet, but that landlord won't approve. So use the idea of authority or the passing of authority, the good guy, bad guy situation. You're always the good guy representing the other party. Keep in mind that that's an opportunity for you to improve your situation, the crunch. But that is more than I want to spend to buy the house. Can't you do better than that? What more can we do? There must be some flexibility in your price. You would be absolutely astounded if you just use those terms for any transaction. You're renting a car. Is that the best you can do? You're, you're buying a suit. Is that the best? Oh, well, we give discounts of 10% if you're you know, over 50 years old, whatever. All you have to do is ask in a gentle way, what did it cost? Almost nothing. But how do you respond to a crunch? You're the seller. Is that the best you can do? And the response is, well, how much were you willing to pay? Somebody comes to you and says, is that the best you can do? And your quick thought is, well, I'll give them a 10% discount. Instead, you say, well, what kind of discount were you expecting? Oh, 5%. Ah, gotcha. So it depends on how you reply to a crunch. And my wife pulled this one. She didn't even know it. She went to, a, a, to an art show. She wanted to buy a painting. She said, how much was it? He said, $30. She pulled out her wallet and said, I've only got 20. I'll take it. She pulled a bogey. You can pull a bogey, too. That's all I've got. I can't afford any more. Now, you can test a bogey, by the way, in, particularly in the sale of a house, when they say, I can only come up with $50,000 down. You might say, but if I'm able to show you a much nicer property that's going to require $75,000 down, would you be interested? Well, I might be able to talk to my uncle about it. So that is a response to a bogey. Straw issues. This is in a contract. It's got lots of things in that contract, some of which are not necessarily strong, or they're straw issues. I had a listing for a sale of a house. The buyer wanted a 60-day inspection period. 60 days? What are you, crazy? That's just way too long. He didn't want 60 days. What he wanted to do was to get the seller to look at the 60 days and say, that's ridiculous. Didn't even look at everything else. It was a straw issue. They really only were, they came back and settled at a 30-day inspection period, which is what the buyer wanted anyway. But what he did is he threw out that straw thing issue. Contracts have a lot of straw issues in them, things that can be wiped out. You as a broker, realtor, should understand that those are in there so that you can improve the transaction. That's the trade-offs that go back and forth. What, what is this? The hairy hand. Can you, how in the world would this apply to negotiations? Well, it applies actually much more effectively than you think. The hairy hand, the story is that a, a portrait artist was painting portraits of people. And every time he'd finish a portrait, the, the, the buyer would say, well, you know, you don't have the eyes quite right, or the ears look a little too long. So what the portrait artist did, he painted hairy hands. So people looked at the portrait, and they said, oh, my God, you got to look at those hairy hands. I'll take care of that. They didn't see the other things. So when you're selling a house, don't say to the people, make sure it's perfect. Make sure there's something that's obviously hairy as in a hole in the wall or a spot on the carpet. Because what will happen is, well, that's just terrible. Look at that spot in the carpet. They don't see the fact that the plumbing's leaking and the roof is leaking. They see the hairy hand. So when you're selling a car, don't fix all the dings. Because they'll see the ding, and they won't know that the air conditioning doesn't work. 
funny money. Break a transaction into the smallest possible denominator. The story they tell is about a man that goes into the uh, Macy's with his girlfriend, and his girlfriend is looking at, at some sheets for the bed. They're silk sheets. They're $1,200. Man, I would never pay $1,200 for, for sheets for a bed. And the salesman said, well, what this represents is a dollar in the last three years. It represents a dollar a day for these sheets. Isn't it worth 50 cents a piece for you to be able to sleep on those sheets with this lovely lady? He broke $1,200 into 50 cents a day and sold the sheets. You can do the same thing with a transaction. It's not the price, it's the cost per day. The nibble. Everything's agreed to, but there's one more thing. Who was the famous guy that walked out the door and turned around and said, now where did you buy the gun that you shot him with? Colombo. Remember him? He was the notorious nibbler. A friend of mine was selling his fancy boat for half a million dollars. They agreed to everything, and at the end, the buyer said, now that does include a full tank of gas. That was $10,000 to fill up the tank. The reason I bring it up is that you will be faced with people who love to nibble, and it can make you very mad if you don't understand that it's a nibble. If it's a nibble, let it go. First action, don't say yes too soon. It's better to say yes but. The three Fs, remember this. You're selling a house near the airport. A noisy plane flies over. The people say, oh, I would never live here, the, the noisy plane. And you said, I remember, and I, I, I remember this thing that Dixon told me. Yes, I know how you feel about airplanes. So you agree. Others have felt the same way, but what I have found, because I've sold other homes in this area, that after a while, it doesn't bother anybody. They just don't hear the planes anymore. I know how you feel. Others have felt the same way. Okay? Those are things to remember in a transaction to overcome objections. Buyers will express reasons to reject. Interesting. I would buy this house if you'd fix the carpet, is somebody that's buying. The person that looks at the house, oh, it's just wonderful. They walk away and never buy. So be aware that the people that are critical may be more buyers than non-buyers. You run into a deadlock. How do you overcome a deadlock? Discuss the open issues. Discuss the closed issues. But what you need to do ultimately is try to say, what if we get this? What if we do this? Would you agree? Children know this. Daddy, if I can get Mommy to let me go to the movie, Dad, will you? Mommy, if I can talk Daddy into letting me go to the movie, will you? You can do the same thing in a transaction. And I like this one. If you can't agree, shut up, walk away, oh, and call me if you change your mind. Very important tactic to be able to close and walk away. Don't make a concession without getting something in return. If you give a concession without getting something in return, if you agree to repaint the house without an increase in price, the repainting the house has no value. The giving and getting creates value in the transaction. If you give, get. Avoid saying no. You're do leasing a property. The tenant wants you to redo the, uh, repaint the inside of the office. You could say, no, I'm not going to do it. But a better answer is, be happy to do it. Extend the lease for two years. Convert a no into a yes. It's not what I can get them to give me. It's what I can give them that would not take away from my position that may be of value to them. So, uh, Chester Class is a, or the original writer of a lot of negotiations, and this is one of the phrases that he uses. What is this one? When you give people what they want, they'll give you what you want. And of course, this is, uh, hey baby, he got what he wanted. Now this presentation, you can go and learn more things about it. Uh, I've taken a lot of books that I put together. You can go to YouTube, look at the negotiation uh, videos that they have. They're excellent. Uh, Roger Dawson puts on a, a wonderful presentation. 
And if you want a copy of what I've just shown you, it's real simple. Just go to my webpage, which is tomdixon.com. You can remember that. And you can download this entire PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much.